In one year, 26 states visited, over 22,000 miles traveled, off-grid camping in some of the most epic locations. Snow, rain, mud, off-road, let's talk about it. In this video series, I'm hoping to entertain you and educate you on everything you may need to know before taking your camper off-grid and off-road while experiencing some of the most epic locations America has to offer. I've traveled over 22,000 miles around America, and I'd say about 10 to 15% of that is off-road. Mostly gravel roads, but some extremer off-road locations when it comes to taking a camper off-road. Here are some of the things I'll be covering in the series. What my tow vehicle is and what modifications I have done to it. What my travel trailer is and modifications I've done to it. How to plan, what apps to use, and how how to find epic locations to camp in, how to plan and pack for two or three weeks off-grid camping, what to pack when you're going two to three weeks off-grid, things you should consider before taking your travel trailer off-road, how to stay safe while boondocking or dispersed camping, tricks and tips I've learned along the way, and the tools I carry when I'm doing all this traveling. In today's video, we're gonna start at the foundation of everything, which is my tow vehicle and my travel trailer and all the modifications I've done to them. But first, I'm gonna make some coffee and then we're gonna jump right into it. All right, let's jump into it. Now, before we get into the modifications, I'm gonna tell you who I travel with. I travel with my wife, my six-year-old daughter, my two-and-a-half-year-old son, and my eight-year-old golden retriever that's 80 pounds. Now, I'm gonna go over all my modifications to my tow vehicle first, and then the travel trailer, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you, out of all the modifications, what I have found very essential for the things I do. Now, forgive me, I can't remember everything. I have a list in front of me, so periodically, you'll see me looking down at my screen. Now, my tow vehicle is a 2020 Ford Expedition with the FX4 package. It has a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 producing 375 horsepower with 470 pounds of torque. It is equipped with the tow package, which has a max tow of 9,300 pounds when paired with a weight distribution hitch, as well as a payload of 1,700 pounds. The FX4 package includes 3.73 electronically controlled limited slip differential. It has off-road shocks. It has a heavy duty radiator, uh, underbody protection and skid plates, 32 inch tires, 360 degree camera, a 10 speed automatic transmission with a two speed electronically controlled four wheel drive transfer case, giving me four wheel drive high and four wheel drive low. Now the modifications I've done to the Expedition are as follows. Let's start with the exterior. Firstly, the tires that came with the FX4 package were not really meant for the off-road, unfortunately. So I decided to upgrade those tires. I stuck with the same size of 275 7018, but I went with Wild Peak 83s. In my experience, these tires work great in the snow and in the dirt and on road with zero noise. I wanted something more aggressive for off-road, but I don't want that road noise. And if you're looking for that, uh, the AT3s by Wild Peak, Falcon Wild Peak are what I recommend. Next up, because I knew I was going to be going off-road with the camper and without the camper, I decided to get some more ground clearance. So I ended up putting a Ready Lift 3-2 lift onto the Expedition. This raises the front end three inches and the rear two inches. Now at the same time, because this is an off-road specific expedition, they do have off-road shocks, which are normally softer and give more dampening for the off-road, which isn't the best for towing because that tongue weight of the trailer will compress those shocks and springs. So how I combated that uh, is I added some sumo springs to the rear. Now before all my adventures started, I knew I'd be going mainly off-season and in places where most people wouldn't be. 
I mainly winter camp. I like going where no one is, but that also poses the problem of uh, getting stuck in the snow and being far away where tow trucks wouldn't be able to reach me in case this happened. And the odds of getting stuck when towing a trailer are obviously increased, so I decided to find a winch for the front of my expedition. Now, nobody makes any accessories for the most part for the Ford Expedition, but I used to have a F-150 which sits on basically the same frame, at least the front end. And when I had that Ford uh, F-150, I thought about adding a winch, never did, but all my research on that led me to uh, a product that Rough Country made. It's called the Exo Winch Mount. And really that gave me the ability to attach a additional bumper, if you will, to the front of my expedition, where I then added a 12,000 pound worn Xeon winch. From there, I really wanted some roof storage. And the reason for the roof storage is if I did unhook from my camper and go more off-roading, I needed somewhere to put extra fuel as well as some uh, 4x4 recovery gear if I did get stuck. So fortunately enough, one of my buddies, King Kingdom Overlanding developed a roof rack for the expedition. It's really the only roof rack aftermarket available and I put that on. It also gave me the ability to add lights all around the SUV. And the reason I add all the lights is when I went to camp, the sun goes down pretty early and I tend never to stay in the same spot more than one night. So I'm constantly moving so I can see as many things as possible leaving me sometimes arriving at dark. So I needed all these lights because off-roading in the dark with no light is a recipe for trouble. While talking about lights, the FX4 package I got did not have the upgraded LED lights on the SUV. Uh, and honestly, the halogen bulbs were terrible. The first time I used them, I thought the lights weren't working. So I did upgrade the light bulbs to all LED light bulbs. Now guys, I have separate videos on all of these upgrades. There will be a playlist down below where you can check it out if you have an expedition and you're looking to do these upgrades, as well as a link to all the products that I've used for these modifications. Now that's the exterior modifications I've done to my expedition. Let's jump into the interior. And really, the main upgrades I've done to the interior is to the driver's cockpit area. I need everything accessible for me, especially when I'm driving. I have two kids and a dog and a wife, and they all sit in the back. So really, everything is left up to me in the front. Um, my wife has to entertain the kids when we're on the road for six to ten hours, depending on the day. So I need everything at my fingertips as far as maps and so on. So starting up top, I have a place for my phone and my camera so I can make these videos. And that is the bullet point dash mount. Next up is my iPad holder. Now I use an iPad for navigation because obviously the GPS that comes with the cars does not include off-road trails and so on. I use a bunch of different apps, so I'll mention those throughout this video series. But I went with the drillless RAM mount for my iPad, and that was made again for the F-150. That just bolts to the bottom of the passenger chair and sticks right up to that location where I can have my iPad readily accessible. Right below that, you'll see another monitor, and that monitor is actually the monitor for the camera system on my travel trailer. I have four cameras all around the travel trailer. Firstly, for security when we're boondocking, and secondly, for when I'm towing and towing down tight trails, I can see all around the camper with that monitor. Now, next up on the list, obviously I need a way to control all the lights I put on my roof rack. So I have an aux beam six bang control switch. Uh, and that controls all my lights from my spotlights in the front to everything on my roof rack. Now the last modification I've done to the Ford Expedition is actually a 12 volt cable running straight from the battery all the way to the tow hitch area. And that is where I actually plug in the camper to the tow vehicle for those bad weather days when I'm traveling and my solar panels cannot charge my batteries, my alternator can actually charge my batteries. So I recommend that for those bad weather days. All right, now that wraps up everything I've done to my Ford Expedition. But arguably the most important piece of equipment you need when taking your travel trailer around 
is the thing that connects your tow vehicle to your travel trailer, and that's the hitch. Now, I've done something that I haven't seen anyone else do or talk about, which I highly recommend. Firstly, everyone uses a weight distribution hitch. I highly recommend them. I use the equalizer hitch paired with something called a shocker hitch. It's an airbag suspension system that eliminates the sway and the bounce from your travel trailer when traveling down the road that transfers into the tow vehicle. So this airbag lets the trailer and the car flex independently and bounce independently while the hitch absorbs all of that road bounce. Something I highly recommend, obviously I have 22,000 miles on mine and I tell you, it's like towing, towing a cloud. Obviously you can feel the weight of the trailer, but this thing makes the bounce in the car virtually eliminated. And the good thing is with it being an airbag, it is fully adjustable. So if you find the bounce is too much, just let some air out and then it'll absorb some more. So I definitely recommend you get a shocker hitch paired with the equalizer hitch. Now that setup is not cheap by any means. I think each of the units are about $600. So yes, it's very pricey, but I tell you, it's extremely worth it. Now let's talk about my travel trailer. I have a 2021 a model Winnebago Micro Mini 2306 BHS. Now, let's get into a little bit of the specs on this. The total length is about 25 feet. It is a width of seven feet, which is extremely important when you want to go off-road with the trailer, in my opinion. But we'll touch base on that why later on. The dry weight of this trailer is 4,500 pounds with a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,000. The hitch weight is about 500 pounds and the fresh gray and black tanks are 31, 25, 25 gallons. Now here are a couple reasons why I went with the Micro Mini 2306. Firstly, the name Winnebago is just so American. I'm not from America originally, but I knew about the name Winnebago years before I moved to America. So I knew the name was global, so I figured that's a good place to start. Secondly, this Micro Mini is seven feet wide. Now the advantage with that is it's a narrow trailer, so that means for the most part, the wheel tracks fit in the same tracks as my SUV. That means when you're driving through mud or snow, the tracks of the trailer go in the tracks of the actual car, making it much easier to tow things through. Also making it easier to know where your tow vehicle wheels are gonna be when you're making some sharp turns and crazy maneuvers. I knew I was going to be taking the travel trailer off road and suspension is a very important thing to consider. Most trailers are leaf spring suspension, which don't really have much give, but the micro mini comes with torsion axle suspension, which is better for off road. Another thing is the 2306 has dual axles, a must when taking a trailer off road. And lastly, the floor plan worked out perfectly for my family. We have a Murphy bed right behind me. It's a full size bed. We have two bunks and then obviously the dinette can turn into a bed as my family expands. One thing that you do sacrifice is it's seven feet wide. So that is a full size bed. I used to sleep in a full size bed in college. Now I deserve a king, but I sleep in a full, but hey, you got to rough it a little bit. So those are the general specs of my Micro Mini. I have over 100 modifications I've done to this Micro Mini from little things to major things. I have a whole video on that, so check that out after this video. But I'm gonna go over the major modifications I've done that I believe help with the off the grid camping. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I think is essential. But firstly, let's go over what I believe is the most important modification, and that is my solar system. I have installed four 190 watt solar panels on the roof for a total of 760 watts of solar. I have paired that with a 60 amp MPPT solar charge controller, and then those are all linked up to four 100 amp hour lithium battle -born batteries. I have replaced the stock propane tanks and I've upgraded to two 30 pound propane tanks because I mainly camp in cold weather. Now for a little extra clearance and getting me more remote when camping, I have installed a macerator pump system. 
What that means is I have removed my typical gravity feed dump station where you just pull a valve and the gray and black tanks dump. I have installed macerator pumps on both the gray and black tank. What that is is essentially a garbage disposal pump where it macerates everything and pumps out all the gray and black water. So this is a two-fold upgrade. This gives me the ability to dump out in porta potties, pit toilets, regular toilets, dump stations, and it also gives me the ability to pump uphill if I need to for some reason. But that also removes all that low hanging plumbing that can get ripped off when off-roading. And this is why, ladies and gents, I removed my dump station and I put macerator pumps in. Because look at that clearance. Zero. Next up on the list, since I travel with four people plus a dog and all of us drink a ton of water, I installed two additional 40 gallon water tanks. Now, make sure your trailer can handle that. Uh, do you need that much water? It all depends. In the Midwest here in winter, you cannot find water anywhere. All the water is shut off. So I really needed the additional water to extend my time when I am camping off grid. And lastly, underneath of the camper, I removed the stock Coroplast insulation uh, for winter camping and I replaced it with half inch foam board. Now the foam board is not as durable as the Coroplast. Uh, it has held up for 16,000 miles. I replaced that later, but I do need to find something more durable. But let's go over the essentials of both the SUV and camper to get to the places I get to. Firstly, on the SUV, the essentials I would have to say is my cockpit setup. With my wife in the back, I can't rely on her to give me things or find locations um, while traveling. What I'd like to do is I put my next day's travel on my iPad with various different camp spots depending on how far I think I'm gonna get that day. So my iPad is located right there as well as the monitor for the camera system around the travel trailer. And then I obviously need my phone. My phone, I use the navigation there to find gas stations along the way when I need gas. And then the camera, obviously, so I can make videos for you. So I would fully recommend my whole setup in the cockpit. If you're interested in doing these kinds of uh, off-roading and dispersed camping you do need everything at your hands reach um, some would say this is distracting for the driver i would argue the opposite i'm not fumbling around looking for things i know exactly what i'm looking for because i pre-plan the night before or when we had a gas station i plan the next stop so i recommend the whole cockpit setup Next up, I would recommend you upgrade the tires. I do recommend the AT3 tires. They are good on-road, off-road, and in the snow. That's why I went for them. And they make zero noise. But you do need a lot more traction, especially when you're going off-road. And you do need something that can handle the road too. So they are a great tire. Third on the list is the shocker hitch weight distribution hitch combination. To me, this whole trip of 22,000 miles would be far more uncomfortable without that shocker hitch. I highly recommend it even at the additional cost. So the fourth thing on the list I would recommend is the winch, but there's some caveats to that. I got stuck twice where I needed to use the winch. Now, I wouldn't have put myself in that position if I didn't have the winch. So therefore I wouldn't have needed the winch. That being said, I travel alone and I travel with my family and obviously I want uh, the most safety possible. So if I do happen to get stuck, I don't want to wait until a tow vehicle or an off-road recovery rig can come tow me out. That's why I have a winch. But if you travel with the group, a winch is not needed because hopefully both of you don't get stuck at the same time someone can help you out. Now, let's talk about the essentials I believe you need in your camper. Firstly, you're most definitely going to want a solar system. If you already have a camper and you're looking to add solar power to it, I have a video linked up here about how I added my solar system to my camper. But if you're new and you haven't bought a camper yet, 
Winnebago now offers something they call the FLX package, which comes on the 2306, a couple different micro minis. And that already, they have increased the solar panels on the roof, included a uh, inverter as well as lithium battery. So I highly recommend you check that out. That basically removes that modification all, all off your list. Um, saving you time and money if you just buy the FLX package. Next up on the list is definitely essential. It's not a difficult job, but it does require some knowledge. And that is removing the gravity fed dump station from your travel trailer. And the main reason you need to remove it is because it will get ripped off. It will get ripped off and then you won't be able to dump anywhere if you decide to take your travel trailer off road. So I would recommend that and I do have a video about how to install that system in your travel trailer. Third up on the list is you going to want torsion axles on your travel trailer. That is a minimum. You can do it with leaf spring axles. The difference is the travel trailer will just get more of a beating off road on those washboard roads, uh, those that that type of a suspension will not be able to absorb some of those bumps. So I would recommend you find a travel trailer with torsion axles um, before you go off-roading with your travel trailer. Fourth on the list, you're gonna wanna try figure out how to get more water. More water means a longer time out at these epic campsites. So if that means adding an additional tank to your travel trailer, again, there's a video on how I did that, or if that means you just carry portable tanks with water, either way, you're gonna to wanna to do that. Now, lastly, on the list, if you are gonna be cold weather camping, you definitely want to increase those propane tank sizes. Now, guys, that was a lot of information on both my tow vehicle and my travel trailer. Hopefully, you found that interesting. I will address more of the modifications of my travel trailer along this video series. But the next videos will be all about planning the trip, how to use the different apps, where to find good locations in camping, and so on. So be sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Share this video with your spouse so you guys can tackle this project together and you can both be on the same page when you're trying to figure out what is actually needed to take your travel trailer off-road. But I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Videos will be coming out every other day for as long as this series goes on. I'm not trying to drag this process on. I'm just trying to be very informative while giving you some great visuals of where you can be when you take your travel trailer off road. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time, I'll see you then.